There's something with, we, we, we forget. We talk about the Holy Spirit, but there's something we forget. And I want to remind you of that today. Matthew 3, 11. John pro- prophesying about Jesus in verse 11. said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you in, not with. The word is E-N. Sometimes translated with, but it's correctly translated in. Just as you are baptized in water, not with water, but in water. As I baptize you in water, he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost, and we stop there. I want to emphasize the fire part. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire. My uh, topic is the importance of fire in a believer's life. Uh, The subtopic is the purpose of Pentecost. I have about four or five purposes. Why Pentecost? And dwelling on this promise of the Holy Spirit and fire. How do they come together? How do they play? Uh, Last week I showed you uh, the Holy Spirit in you. Today I want to show you the Spirit upon you. And I showed you the difference between those two things. My, My big picture was, you can't have that, meaning Pentecost, until you have this, meaning the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to twist it a little bit and say, you cannot have this Pentecost unless you had that, the infilling. So it's a baptism of the Holy Spirit in you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. How many of you are feeling weak? Lack of energy, not just physically. But mentally, you've been struggling and you're getting tired of the mundane, of the same fight every day. You wake up the same battle. It seems that there is no end to your struggle. It seems that your prayers are being uh, not, not listened to by God and not heard. And you tend to sometimes feel that God is not caring about you. He doesn't love you. You can go to the extreme with your emotions and say, where is the God I serve and how come after so many years I cannot find him when I need him? And so you are, you're you're going down mentally, you're going down emotionally, you're sinking somewhere in a pit and you live it every day. Well, there's one word, there are five power words when we, when Jesus said, I give you power, there are five power words and one of them is energima. And it means to energize. And this is what I want you to feel. The energy of the Holy Spirit. So when you're down in your deep dark pit. The energy the energy of the Holy Ghost will come in you. And release that power. So that greater will be in you. That what surrounds you. I wish the energy manifest today in our lives. Hallelujah. Well, that's one word uh, that, that reflects the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. Let, let, me, let me read that verse because it's very interesting. John 20, 21. Just 20, 21. He came into the room and said, peace be unto you. As my father sent me, even so send I you. And now watch this. And when he said this, he breathed into them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's interesting. The word breathe there. Uh, Nafak. To breathe or to blow with force. It's like how God breathed into Adam in his nostril with force. The Nafak. It's a deep guttural breathing. 
Not a shallow breathing like we see televangelists. No, 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 not that kind of thing. They're imitating. They don't have the power. He breathed from inside of him and released the Holy Spirit into them. Now, see where I'm going. And to these same people that he breathed the Holy Ghost into them, according to Luke 24, watch what he's going to say to these same people. When he had finished speaking, verse 49, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my father, which John spoke about, upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. What is he saying? He just breathed into them and they received the Holy Ghost. And now he's telling them, wait in Jerusalem for another experience. Something bigger, something more majestic, something more powerful. Until the power from heaven comes up. On you, you shall receive the dunamis, the dynamite, the power of the living God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So three words I want to emphasize. Energy, the divine energy. Dunamis, the dynamite. And puros, the, the fire of God. Amen. This promise of fire, let, let, let me tell you, give you a little testimony. I just got saved. I was about 16 and a half. I now, they allowed me to go into Bible school at 17. You're supposed to be 18. They saw some potential in me, but I could never forget that Tuesday night in a little home with about six people. Do not underestimate prayer meetings in homes. Amen. Do not judge God by the crowd that surrounds you. So I was there and about nine o'clock, some strange power came upon me and I felt the power and I hugged the chair. I could have almost crushed that chair. I had a hymnal, you know, the melodies of praise and I wrung it to shreds. That kind of power I felt coming upon me and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now saved. Now, the, the assistant pastor who lives uh, a few miles away was hurried to leave the prayer meeting and go home. But I wouldn't quit. I'm, I don't know what, I, I'm, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. And he shook me. I'll never forget this. He shook me, my assistant pastor, and said to me, you're playing, you have fire. I bet one day I will have to come and strike a match under you and light your fire. There I said a prayer. God, never let it be that any man at any time should ever have to come and strike a match under me and light my fire. Amen. Never. 56 years have rolled away and nobody has ever had to light my fire. Nobody had ever had to come and encourage me to go to church. Nobody ever said, why are you not in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning? You know why? Because I have the fire. When you have the fire, you will burn. And God said, I wish you were either hot or cold. He wants you to have the fire. He promised you the fire. You got to have the fire. It doesn't matter who puts their mouth on you. It is what matters is when God puts his fire in you. Let people talk. You burn. Let people criticize you. You stay in the fire of God. Somebody said you burn and people will come to see you. Hallelujah. Give him glory for the fire. Oh, let the fire fall today. Fall, fire of God, fall upon us. We need the fire. We need the energy of the fire. We need it. How many of you have stoves at home and when you turn it, no fire comes? You don't leave the stove on fire burning all day long. But you turn it when you need it. 
And, and when you see, you, you don't find me jumping, home, jumping up home all the time. No, no. I don't jump home because the fire is not on. Till I come here. And I start to walk from there. I turn the switch on. And by the time I come up here, something different happens. It's fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. I don't want to quote the Calypso Rose who used to sing long time. Fire, fire, in me wire, wire. Ay, ay, ay. Oy, oy, oy. But I could say better than, than Calypso Rose. Fire in my soul. You'll keep me burning until eternity comes. Hallelujah. You need that fire. You have to have that fire. You must burn with the holy fire of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now here's the big picture. And I will close with this statement as well. What's happening from Calvary to Pentecost? Four lines, and I want you to remember. This will create a big picture scenario. When Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down. Then the church went out and the people came in. That's the wrapping of this whole series. And I'll, I'll say that when I'm, when I'm finished. Now, Acts chapter 1. I just want to touch one verse there. You, you know the story of Pentecost. Acts chapter 1. Sorry, Acts chapter. Yeah, Acts chapter 1. Verse 14. They had just finished electing the 12th apostle. In my opinion, I think they missed the point. Uh, I don't think Matthias was the man. But you know, Peter jumped the gun, probably. So that's that. The sad thing is that Matthias' name is going to be one of the foundation stones in New Jerusalem. And the real guy, probably uh, Barnabas or Paul, I don't know. Let's not go there. But um, It's rather Acts 2.14. When everything was done there, and Pentecost had happened, they wanted to know, they were, verse 12, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to them, what, what's the meaning of this? What's going on here? Others mocking said, these men are filled with new wine. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Nobody gets drunk except you from my island at 9 o'clock in the morning. And so, but Peter, standing up with the leaven, lifted up his voice. This is an interesting statement, why I'm going here. Peter and the other apostles had fled when Jesus was arrested. He still tagged along from a distance to see what was happening. Now, the church was huddled in a little room. And the crowd, thousands of people outside, pressing to find out what's happening. Peter stood up with the eleven. The day has come that the first purpose of Pentecost is that when the Spirit falls, when the Spirit comes down, you and I have to stand up. Peter, standing up with the eleven. We have to make our stand in these last days. Because everything around us is falling apart. The morals of the countries are falling apart. People's uh, uh, opinions are spreading false, fake news. 
everything around us is deteriorating when the foundations are eroded, the righteous will even fall. But we have to stand. We must stand together with the 11. If you want to stand out, you have to stand up. We have to stand up for something or we will fall for anything. The people of God have to stand. And you can only stand when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Before that, you will, you will run when, when the church is persecuted. Before that, you will hide. Before that, like Peter, you will go by somebody else's fire and warm yourself. Before the Holy Ghost comes, you will be a lone runner. But when the Holy Ghost comes, you will stand together with the eleven. You will stand up for truth against all the odds of the enemy. We have to stand now. Stand together as a church. Stand in the time of difficulty. Stand in the time of joy. But we have to stand together. We must be a people who have come in one accord. Be it a Honda or a Mazda. We must come into one accord. Hallelujah. That togetherness cannot be defeated by the enemy. That coming together cannot be uh, troubled by satanic forces. That's the first purpose of Pentecost. is for us to stand. When you have the Holy Ghost, you will. The second purpose is to understand, appreciate, and continue. Because on the day of Pentecost, it was the birth of the church. Much can be said. There's a whole sermon there on the birth of the church. I could go back into Genesis and to the gospel, but, but the church had to be born. Fifty days after the resurrection, pente meaning 50, uh, the first fruits, the, the in gathering, the feast of Pentecost happened 50 exact days after he rose. Let me tell you, God has a perfect sense of timing. Not one day before, not one day after, on the self same day. And, and uh, Peter explained, you see what's happening here? This is that which was spoken of by Joel the prophet. In the last days, and the last days probably began from there. It's been a long last day. But scripture has a way of what we call double reference. It referred to what he's saying there, but it still continues to refer to our times. That I am saying in these last days that we're living in, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I'm saying that men will dream dreams and big things will happen because we serve a big God. And then you come out of the small thinking, the little church mold, and see the bigger picture of the glorious body of Christ that was birthed on the day of Pentecost. You can't have growth if you didn't have birth. And anything that's born of God will grow in God. And the reason why Deeper Life is still standing after 32 years is because we were born of God. And we are growing with God. And we will continue to grow until we hear the sound of the trumpet. Hallelujah. Oh, give him glory. And, uh, I don't know what people are worried about the church. I am not worried about Jesus' church. Never been worried. Why? Because no matter what you see decaying around you, Jesus probably knocked his chest humbly or proudly. I don't know. But he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. I am not worried about the church of Jesus Christ because the builder is Jesus Christ himself. And he's building his church. He's growing his church. And daily the Lord added such as should be saved. You can't have growth if you didn't have birth. And so the second purpose of Pentecost is to watch the church grow. And we can make that happen as I'll show you. It grew so fast. Not like Jack and the Beanstalk, but similar. 
Next morning, great tree. Instantly, same day, more than 3,000 people got saved. And somebody mocked us properly. Modern preachers. I, 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 I can take the mocking. It's probably true. Peter preached one sermon and 3,000 people got saved. We preached 3,000 sermons and probably one person <laughs> might get saved. Yeah. The third purpose of Pentecost is that they said, how hear we every man in our own language? 17 nations gathered there. 17 nations heard the tongues, the different languages spoken, communicating to the hearers. And they said, wow, how hear we every man in our own language? That's the purpose of Pentecost, that we take this gospel and carry it to every nation and to every language in their language. Thank God for the Bible societies that are doing that, translating the word of God into language after language. And Jesus said, when the all nations shall have heard, then the end will come. We're close there. We're very close. And uh, purpose number four, Jesus said, tarry until you be endued. Oh, that's a whole sermon right there. I'm I, I, I just going to cut it short there. We, we, we don't understand, and I want you to understand, the difference between the spirit in you and the spirit upon you. The spirit in you is to make and mold your character more like Jesus. But when the spirit comes upon you, that is for ministry. He anoints you with power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to bring life into whatever you touch. Because there's a supernatural power. This is not of human origin. This power is not of man. It cannot be fabricated. Somebody may come and lay a hand on your head and say, say after me, shaba, shaba, shaba. And you say, shaba, shaba, shaba. And you think you got it. That's a fake. That Tuesday night I referred to, the next night was prayer meet, uh, uh, midweek service under a house. And I remember clearly standing up in the last bench. We had no fancy bench, just a broad bench. If you lean back over, you fall. <laughs> yeah, no backrest. But I remember the night clearly as they were singing. I just, I was singing the song and, and my tongue just changed and, and took over and I began to sing in tongues and I spoke in tongues, nobody touching me. Hallelujah. What I got, I got from God. I didn't get it through a man. That's why I still have it. When God gave you something, nobody can take it away from you. The gifts of the callings of God are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind when he calls you. You just need to stir up what God gave you. Stir it up. It's there. Turn your pot or it's going to burn. Stop minding other people's business. Stop trying to turn the pot for other people and tell them, hey, mind your own business. Make sure your house is in order. Make sure your fire is burning. Make sure that your life is growing. Take time for yourself. Examine yourself and see whether you be in the faith or not. Or oh, somebody give him glory. May the spirit come upon you. May he anoint you. To endure means to clothe us with a garment. When Elijah tossed his mantle on Elisha, he received a double portion. And that's what the word endure means, to, to mantle, to put, put on a garment. And uh, God is going to garment you with power. That's the word. I, I don't think we are underprivileged people, but I do think we live under our privileges. Power, behold, I give unto you power. Is he bluffing? I give unto you power. I, Jesus, give unto you power. I give you energy, ma. I give you energy. I give you strength. Iskus. I give you divine strength. And now he's stopping it off. I give you power. Power. A power that comes upon you. 
Hallelujah. And so once you get the power and the anointing, purpose number five is to move from Jerusalem to Judea and to Samaria, then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Some people want to go to China as missionary and their own neighbor don't know that they are Christians. We dress up quietly and quickly drive out our driveway and we go to church. That's the extent of it. This is where the church has fouled up. We are not a going church. We are not a church today that wants to come out of the four walls. But the purpose of Pentecost is to drive us outside where the sinners are. You can't fish in the aquarium. I have many evangelists who come to and say, Pastor, I want to come and keep an evangelistic service in your church. I said, we don't have sinners in the church. Let's go outside and get them. Let's bring them inside and disciple them. Let's lay hands upon them and heal them and empower them to go and become witness. This is the cycle of bringing people in, training them and releasing them. And the church have failed. I always say, if the Pentecostal churches had the method of the Jehovah Witnesses, and if the Jehovah Witnesses had the message of the Pentecostal, we would have won this world already. One have zeal without knowledge, and one have knowledge without zeal. May we find a balance. So he wants to clothe you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to bring that spirit of power upon you. So that there will be no weak believers. All empowered by the Holy Spirit. I close with this illustration. A, a, a wife sent a husband to buy a piece of meat. Well, if you're like, like me, don't sell me to buy nothing. Because I always come back with the wrong thing. I'm no kidding. She's specific in what she wants. And sometimes she will send me a picture text of what it is, the can, the name, and I will still get it wrong. <laughs> so we were in the store recently and she said, go pick up uh, two tinna carnation milk while I do something here. She was getting ready for t yesterday. And I so afraid this lady because <laughs> I picked up the can and I brought her and said, because my carnation milk on it. So I showed it to her, she looked at me like, that is not it. I said, but it's my carnation milk here. She said, um, I said, it's not carnation milk you want. She said, but that is not, I said, I don't see nothing else. She said, go back and look at right there. So when I went back and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I watched Way down below, I see another bigger can mark, carnation milk, evaporated milk. The first one was condensed milk. Why are you confusing me? So I brought the can and said, baby, is this the one you want? She said, yes, that's the one. Go take up two cans. So I don't play with, um, with shopping. I, 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 I quit. I just can't please her no matter how hard I try. I don't know, ladies, if you have the same problem with your guys. You give them a list and they forget the list. You send them a picture and they bring the wrong thing. Well, this was the kind of guy I'm talking about. His wife gave him uh, a list to go and buy a pork leg and all the ingredients he needs with it. I'm going somewhere with this. So he got this nice pork leg. And he was reading the instructions. So he got thirsty. And he rested on a long time ago by the side of the well. And he was drinking some water. Up came a big dog. <laughs> and snatched the leg. And ran off. And the man started to laugh. He said, ha ha. 
You go with the leg. I have the recipe. You see, that's the problem of the church. We have the recipe. But the real thing is gone. May the Holy Spirit return. In power. In energy. In fire. In glory. Upon his church. Hallelujah. I closed with what I opened. When Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down. The church went out and the people came in. That's the end of my series. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something in the last 10 sermons. May God bless you. And may the fire fall upon you. May you burn for Jesus. May you come Hallelujah. over the four walls. May you become a witness. For the spirit of power is that you shall be witnesses unto me. Even to the end of the earth. God bless you. I love you.